Welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Shop Chronicles. We've got the Pikes Peak car back in the garage here, and believe it or not, as I'm recording this, we've had the car out at High Plains Raceway for a day of testing, and we've actually done our first weekend of testing on, on Pikes Peak for the 2022 Pikes Peak Hill Climb. Uh, before we dive into everything, just want to say, if you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like the content that we're putting out, please do like and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a ton, and uh, you know, heck, share this video, share one of the videos that you like that we put out. Um, if you help us get the word out, that helps the channel grow, and we greatly appreciate that as well. A lot of you watching, your first question is going to be the cooling system. Where are we at with the cooling system? If you go back and you watch some of the earlier Garage Chronicles videos where you know, we, about what we did with removing the radiator cap uh, from the, our radiator, and as far as tearing down the engine and discovering that the head gaskets were in fact compromised on this car, it's all back together now, head gaskets are good, and... When we tested out on High Plains, it was actually on a, a pretty warm day. It was 85 degrees. Scott was able to take the car out and did three 20-minute sessions. And I think probably the cooling system is working better on this car than it ever has maybe in the last 10 years. Um, the maximum coolant temperature that we saw on track was 187 degrees Fahrenheit uh, when the car was running. And the only time the coolant temperatures got above that was when Scotty was coming off track, slowing down, the airflow was, was coming off of the car and it came up to 205, fans kicked on, cooled everything right down, basically just as you would, you would hope or you would want. Um, so every indication we have right at this point is that the cooling system is working basically as good as it ever has been, and that's hugely encouraging. So, and I mentioned that we've been testing on Pikes Peak already. Um, that actually went really well too, so I wanted to bring up to speed on that. Um, we got two days of testing in, so one day on the top section, one day on the bottom, and the car was doing really well. Um, on the top section, we were able to put in a really respectable time. Um, on the bottom section, the second day, that was basically running from the start line to just below Glen Cove. And that is actually the, the qualifying section. So when you're, when you're qualifying on Pikes Peak, that is the section of the road that you run and to set your qualifying time to set the start order. And because of that, we have a lot of historical data with this car on that, on that part of the road. And Scott was doing an amazing job driving all weekend and especially on Sunday, just kept finding time. And I don't know if that's just because the car was running well, because the cooling system was working well. Um, relatively speaking, we had a pretty trouble-free weekend, but he just kept finding seconds. And in fact, by the end of the by the end of the day, he had found he basically went five seconds faster in that qualifying bottom section than we've ever done in this car before. And the crazy thing is, because there was weather on the mountain, it, heck, it snowed two feet at the summit the week before we tested. Um, we, we still had the AO52s mounted to the tires from Super Light Battle, and those are the tires that we just left on because they got some grooves. They would definitely be better in wet or, or damp conditions compared to a slick. So that's what we were running on. So he found five seconds better than he's been a, faster than he's ever gone before on an AO52, not even on the Hoosier slick tire yet. So that's a really encouraging sign. I mean, no pressure, Scott, if you're watching this, but it, it's really encouraging for us as a team that that this car is working well and like there's there's definitely some time to be had on the mountain this year and that that's what we want i mean this is where we finally got the dry sump working we finally got the turbo working well cooling system working well we want to see what this car at its current power level of about 420 wheel horsepower what it can do on the mountain so our fingers crossed that we're going to get good weather this year we're going to be able to get a full run in from from the from the start line all the way up to the summit and really finally once and for all find out what this car can do so that's where we're at. We're actually testing again this weekend on Pikes Peak. And mark your calendars, Pikes Peak for 2022 is June 26th, Sunday, June 26th. Um, I'm sure there's going to be streaming options, so stay tuned to our social media. Um, as, as soon as we find out what the, what the viewing options are for that, we'll let you know if you can't come out here and watch the race in person. So there might be another update before we race, but there might not be. It's a little bit of a scramble keeping day-to-day -day operations going and, and getting the car all sorted. But uh, yeah, if we don't talk to you before, Definitely stay tuned after the race. We'll let you know how it all went, and hopefully we'll have some, some good news and some good results for you. So thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. And as always, until next time, stay tuned with Flatirons Tune.